Hey, pro athletes, ready to dominate your finances and secure your future? Choose Oakbridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti, your ultimate financial planning partner. We tackle your unique financial challenges with a tailored, comprehensive approach. Join top NFL players and experience the Oak Bridge difference. Just ask the Miami Dolphins' Alec Ingold. He says the systems and personal service my family received have been outstanding. Ready to take the next step? Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anacetti. That's OakbridgeWM underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And become the champion of your financial destiny. Presented by betonline.ag. Once again, I'm Matt Perkins, joined as always by Badger legend, the Hebrew hammer himself, Matt Bernstein. Bernie, how are we doing today? Every day on the podcast is a holiday. Uh, we got some studs from Wisconsin, but also doing this, you know, this great thing um, called Vibes Golf Club. Super excited. I think this is our last, the last three. Um, so guys, just thank you for being here. Uh, this is a, a true pleasure. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you having us. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. La- hey, last three is the best three, actually. <laughs> well, they did tell us to save the best for last. So here tonight, uh, we have uh, director of operations, Austin trailer. We have director of public, ra- uh, public re- <laughs> relations, Ken Zeldo and, the man, the myth, the legend himself, director of content creation, Rob Wheelwright. Uh, gentlemen, it's so awesome to be here for part four of our uh, series with all of our friends from Vibes Golf. Uh, we love what you guys are doing. We believe in what you guys are doing in the mission. And uh, like I said, we couldn't be happier to have you guys here to talk about Vibes, talk about Badgers. Uh, before we get into anything, I want to remind you guys that we are presented by betonline.ag, where they remain your number one source for all of your online sports wagering needs. You name it, they've got it over there at Bet Online. NBA playoffs in full swing, as are the NHL playoffs. Always some good UFC, boxing, bath, baseball, I mean, casino games, card games. It's all over there at betonline.ag. So head on over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit with our promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V, Bet Online, where the game starts. And so we're just going to jump right into it. And I'm going to start uh, with Kenzel. So Kenzel, what was your first interaction with the game of golf? Like, how, when did you first even like get to be around the game of golf? Uh, it was when I was in uh, San Diego. Um, it was when I was in San Diego. I was, uh, when me and Melvin was in San Diego. And then we ended up linking with No Way and, no, it kind of really introduced us. Well, I don't know about Mel, but introduced me to the game of golf. Um, you know, when he wanted to go to the range and stuff one day, and do and I say I ain't know what I was doing. I, <laughs> I ain't know what I was doing. I ain't, you know, I kept missing. You know, because you always think like going out hitting the golf ball is the easiest thing in America, um, but it ain't as easy as you think it is. So you know, I, my whole thing was I'm trying to kill it. I'm trying to hit the ball as far as I can. And I missed every time, but that's kind of how I got introduced to the game of golf. And then no, it kind of just brought the whole idea with the whole, you know, uh, vibes. So we didn't have a name at first, but just his idea about what he wanted to do. So that's kind of how I got introduced to it. Rob, what are you smiling about? This Kenzel, him, him, him hitting the ball as hard as he possibly can. And it going like two feet in front of me. I think that's literally the funniest thing ever. Like <laughs> that, that, that don't happen no more though. That, that, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I ain't gonna lie I still have sometimes <laughs> I just try to get it past the women's tees <laughs> I just try I try my hardest it was a kids I'm with you man it, it still happens it still happens and then it's like when you slow it down the ball go further then it's like dude come on ain't, ain't no way 
I'm slowing this down and it goes further when I'm trying to take that, take the, bust the ball open just to get, just to get it down as far as they, than everybody else that's swinging literally just as smooth as possible. Excellent. Excellent. Well, what about you, Austin? How about you? How did you get introduced to the game of golf? What was your first interaction? Um, my first interaction, honestly, was at college, um, in which uh, Sam Arneson, even Molly, I think, some of Steph is, some of the guys used to already golf. So we ended up doing a summer outing, going to a golf course and playing. We might have did nine holes at one time, 18 a second. So I kind of went with the group of guys, our coach, um, just suggested us go do something. And that was the thing we did. And I, and that was kind of my first time actually on a golf course trying to learn. And they were like coaching me up, trying to teach me how to get some decent hits and I was probably just as bad as Kinzel with his first time out, but it was just a couple years sooner. So that was my first introduction to the actual game of golf. And I just, it was a more social event for me than actually competing when I first went out there, especially knowing I was playing with guys who had been playing golf longer than I had. So it was just kind of enjoying the boys and everything. Rob, what about for you? Uh, For me, I think I started playing golf in middle school like on and off my dad used to go all the time and you know he would get me to go out there but like none of my friends like none of them played golf didn't know what golf was probably knew who tiger woods was but (laughs) they didn't know anything about it so i think that kind of got me out of golf like so i played in middle school and then once i got to high school you know it was football basketball track you know i kind of left uh golf alone and i think Maybe a few years ago, uh, on Father's Day, I kind of picked it back up. I took my dad golfing. He loves golf. Took him golfing, and I kind of, like, you know, found the love again for it. And, you know, I think after that, I started going all all summer, all you know, all golf season. <laughs> I was going, like, at least once or twice a week, uh, me and my guys. Again, it's a, it's a great social uh, atmosphere. Like, we go there, you talk, you, you clown, we talk about sports, everything, uh, you know, life and all that. So, I think it was a great social aspect during that time, COVID, um, and and then you know just the love for the game. You and Toe was going all the time, calling me after everyone. So, so Austin, Kenzo, did you guys enjoy golf the first time? It doesn't sound like you really liked the game. <laughs> My first time, like I said, for me, the first time was just a social thing. Like, I really, I wasn't good. I was kind of sporadic. We was playing, um, I think I partnered, I can't remember who I partnered up with. So I was kind of just shooting from his shots every time, trying not to lose every ball that I hit. But um, it was just more fun. Uh, For me, it was more, I didn't, probably didn't enjoy actually playing golf, but being golfing was fun because, like I said, that was just a social thing with the tight end group. And it was just a good time to hang out with the guys that way. At first, nah, because I couldn't hit the ball. So it was like, you get frustrated. But I would definitely say it was one time where I, I think, I don't know if we still have that video or it was a picture or something that we took. It was me, Melvin, and No Way. And we all decided, like, we're going to swing at the same time. And literally all three of us connected, you know, perfect. It was like in unison. We was at the range. And then that right there, it, it, it solidified that I started to like it just because I'm like, okay, I, I hit the ball for the first time and it went far. So I'm like, okay, so if I is if I get used to it, you know what I mean, hitting the ball, then I know I'm going to like it even more just because, you know, when it's, when it's something you ain't good at, you kind of tend to be like, man, I don't even want to do that no more because I ain't good in it. But it's like once I hit that ball that one time, that's when it was like, okay, I actually like this because I like the way it felt. You know, I like the way it felt when I actually hit that, you know, hit the ball clean. Now, the form was terrible, but I hit the ball clean. So, <laughs> once I did that, then that's when it was like, yeah, let's do this. It, it's almost like when you're shooting 130 on the day and on the 18th hole, you have like a good layup. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll come back next yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, this is great. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. At, I love golf. I'm good at it. <laughs> it's a, that's you know, that football that's- amnesia, you're like – the last play doesn't count. <laughs> you only need one good shot all day. Yeah. Only one. Okay. One will bring you back. <laughs> one putt, it'll bring one you back putt, every time. It's going to bring you back every time. I'm telling you, man. Me, I get one putt. I had a crazy day. I went crazy the whole day. If I do one putt, I might have been terrible. 18 old. That last a good putt. Oh, yeah, I was the best thing out there. You ain't going <laughs> to. I'm talking trash. I'm still living off a putt I made at Uridge 15 years ago. 
<laughs> well, it's also people who remember that putt. So I go, oh, Kenza, dude, remember 15 years ago you hit that 40 foot putt? No, man. People don't remember anything else. You could have shot 190. <laughs> I'm, living, um, I'm living off that one good putt I had for the rest of my life. <laughs> would you, you saved this in the uh, event we did when we sent guys down there in Diego, didn't you, with a good yeah, putt? Yeah, it was 18 hole. It was a, uh, we needed, um, in order to tie to go to the playoffs, we needed to, uh, we needed to par. And I don't know how long it was. It was a long putt. And, you know, I had, you know, I had to do my thug this. I had happy and you know what I mean? I played terrible the whole day, but I said, hey, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to make this putt for the team. And I made that long putt. I get, we got a video of it and everything where we literally, like, celebrating and all that stuff to send us into the playoffs for that tournament that we played in in San Diego. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. Um, you know, something I find that's really interesting about Vibes is that you know, you guys are what nine football players, mm -hmm. which is is the unique bond in and of itself, right? And to have like someone else come in and be part of the group isn't that weird, but it's different than I think like a lot of people's experience in college. You know, everyone's kind of like the fringe if they didn't, because you know you're lifting early, you're practice, you're at the training table, you're watching film, you're doing all these things that no college kid is doing. What was like your first initial meeting with Noe? And like walk us through like what that was. <laughs> I let off the go. <laughs> <laughs> My first initial meeting with Noe was I wasn't about to let him in the party. <laughs> <laughs> so we was it was a party at somebody's apartment. And Noe at the time, he was real cool with um Dead Southward, who I actually I worked at the stadium with over the summer. And I was cool with him and, of course, James. So um, we all had to party. And I'm just kind of – they don't want it to get out of hand, so I'm just kind of sitting at the door monitoring who's coming in and out. And I might have opened the door, and I think maybe Ike walked in first and no way was coming in behind him. <laughs> and I, like, grabbed him up, like, who is this? <laughs> like, who is this? Like, nah, bro, you can't come in. <laughs> Dez, like, he might have called Dez and James and them when they seen it. And they like, oh, hold on, Taylor. No, he's good. That's my <laughs> point. Like, he's good. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that was actually my first interaction with Noe was that time at the party. But then after that, you know, he was around more. I seen him more, been with the guys and everything, and we got cool. Yes, you know? so, I love yeah. that. We Wait, hold on, Ken. Uh, hold on one second. Wait, Austin, did you work in maintenance at the stadium? Yes, I did. So, dude, four years I did that. Oh, you got you four summers. Good. You had it good. You had it good. I did it for uh, two years, and it was me and Dez. We we had a good little time. <laughs> it, it's my favorite job of all time. We would leave at lunch, go play Tiger Woods golf for three hours, come back and sign out. Yeah, because they wouldn't give football players a raise because there's just like. To me, this was like 01 to 05. We just got <laughs> caught with the shoebox. Oh, yeah, yeah. So to get a raise, you had to like – it was like 25 cents an hour. I, I was like, all right, guys, I don't even have to work this. And the stadium was under construction. So right. it, was the, the, it was so dirty all the time that cleaning anything was a waste of – so basically it was it was great. I just painted stuff and that was it. So that's, so that's how we was. We'll go paint stuff. And then that's – we had – I had got it. I was in there still when the new locker room had came. So we would go sit in the players' lounge, play – Pool, play darts, sleep some. In other, Ooh, was, in other words, good, good. filling checks. <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, it was it's too late work, now. Man, I, I replaced a lot of napkins, uh, paper towel racks in the bathrooms, <laughs> and I did a lot of painting. So I, I, I earned my key. <laughs> Listen, Kenzo, don't, don't think like the managers were working that hard either. <laughs> like, it, 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 it was a very nice summer job is what it was. Yeah, look, during the summer, I'm over here working at, uh, I think I worked at UW Telefunding. It's like where you call like the donors, and I'm in there like, dude, I'm ready to get up out of here, man. It's like I'm calling on the phone all day, and you get to talking to all the. He like, shit, bro, I just been chilling all day. I'm like, dude, I'm like, How you I had my walkie talkie, man. If they needed anything, just hit the walkie talkie. <laughs> Dude, you're bringing me back. This is literally my favorite job. I hung out with Zach Hampton, who was a DB. Okay, um, bunch of dudes would just come in throughout the you know throughout the summers. And I was just there every year because why not? I mean, it was like six bucks an hour and 
I was. It might have even been the last. It was pretty bad. It was really bad. <laughs> it, was, it was high by the time I got it, Rob. It was a little. <laughs> okay. I was around when he was there. <laughs> it was a little better. Game. <laughs> It wasn't good, man. It wasn't good. Uh, I'm sorry. I, t- I totally forgot. Well, uh, so, Kenzo, your first time with uh, meeting No Way. So, I, I think I met No Way. My first time meeting No Way uh, was at a was at a party. I think it was my, yeah at a party. But I'm gonna just give you this little No Way. Going, he brings it up every time I talk to him. Literally every time I talk to him. So. We end up meeting Noah, but then he, like you said, he started being around us a little bit, um, just a little bit more. But you know, it was just more of those, like, okay, who is this little Mexican that's just always around there, all the football players? It literally, it's like it don't even look like he fit in. You know what I mean? But we went out to the field. <laughs> we went out to the field one day. Uh, you know, we out there, you know, throwing and stuff like that, kind of just having a good time. And Noah's out there with us. So, you know, we doing that whole, like, you know, a receiver play a DB and a DB play, you know, receiver. Just, like, joking around, seeing, like, you know, switch it up a little bit. So, here's yeah, down, down He, he loves to tell this story to everybody, literally. I'm, and I'm going to tell it because I know he probably wanted to tell it since he was, like, y'all was all here. So, uh, he was lined up in the slot. And the whole time, anytime no way he went to a receiver, I went to DB because he just kept talking. Locked them up, locked them up every time. And but this this one time that I guess wrong, <laughs> <laughs> I guess wrong. And I ain't gonna lie, he ran a Chris Brown. He ran he 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 ran a um he ran a a, a corner post. I was thinking he was going to the corner route, and then he came back to the post. So I'm still running. I'm like looking like where the ball is, and he and he caught the ball in the end zone. Like I ain't gonna lie, it was a perfect route. It was a perfect route, and that's when I got introduced. No way, I'm like, all right, you the Mexican. You, <laughs> you I don't even know you hang around because I know he gonna he gonna rally me up, make me look like I'm unathletic. You know what I mean? But ever since then, you know, no way's like he's been our homie, man. He's literally been like a close friend to literally all of us ever since college. So it's going on what eight, nine years now. You know what I mean? And then. The rest is obviously history. So what did Rob? you guys want to – oh, yeah, go ahead, Rob. Go ahead. Oh, we – yeah. Um, I, I Honestly, I was okay with moving on. I honestly can't remember when and where I met No Way. I think I just met him through them. I'm about like, to say, just, I think he was kind of back because you Rob. Yeah, younger, he was a little so. bit older than me, and he, he wasn't really yet my crowd. They were – he, he hung out with, like, Kenzel and I. Yeah. But I was for sure around, but we didn't really create a relationship like where we talk, you know, we can hit each other up on the phone or not. Uh, maybe within the last few years, like maybe a year or so, like we got a lot closer. But of course, I've always known of no way. You know, I call him no way. No way. N-O-W-A-Y. No way. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it was just it's, it's been recent. Uh, what I want to know is if. I see your hat. I see. I see. I see the. I see the logo. It says vibes. I'm like, hey, because I've asked this question to everybody. What is golf golf vibes golf club, and what does it mean to you? And so, Austin, I want to start with you. Um, vibes, I think, is a not only just a brand, but a kind of a movement. And what we're trying to create it to is more like a family and like a um, well polished group of people. I mean, like a not just a. Uh, people but somebody relatable people that are relatable and family have something in common um it's a golf, and i tell people you know i kind of describe how it is on the side that's the amateur golf club and we're trying to push for the game um pushing it towards inner city make it visible and just another option making um golf actual sport option for inner city kids minority kids and everything just like basketball just like football just like baseball the track might be just opening guys like the game of golf and showing that it can be and is fun too. Um, just to kind of piggyback off of what Austin is saying, um, I think like even me talking about when I, I played in middle school and none of my friends played, um, and that was a big thing for me. And I, I ended up not playing because I didn't have I didn't have my friends to play with me. So again, uh, attacking the inner city. Um, being there, being around, and showing kids that golfing is for everyone. You know what I'm saying? There's uh, lead, lead stereotypes at home. Uh, golfing is for everybody. You can get out there. It's fun. Um, it's, a, it's a competitive atmosphere. And there's nobody else to blame but you. 
And it, I feel like top competitors love when you can compete and it's just you. You don't have to depend on nobody. <laughs> um, so I, I love that aspect of it. And vibes, we, we we're vibes. Like, like again, they met, they met no way we're at parties, right? So I think that's our vibe, man. And if we can bring that into a golf course and have fun with it while actually getting better and playing golf, you know, I think that's just a great uh, atmosphere to be in, with, uh, you know, with some friends or with your brothers or, you know, your colleagues or, or whoever, your peers. Yeah, Can't for tell? me, it's just like being like making an impact, you know, on people that, you know, that kind of look like us. Like you said, like, you know, it's pretty much what Austin said, because you, you don't see a lot of people that look like us is in golf, especially like me and Rob got dreads or. You know, it, it's just like, it's, it's be you. You know, I think our whole thing is like, you know, be you no matter where you are. If you like to have a good time and, you know, with your friends and all that stuff, you can still do that same thing on the golf course. You don't have to go wear khakis and a button up to try to fit in with everybody else. It's like, hey, if you want to wear a T-shirt and some basketball shorts and some Jordans, go out there. Because at the end of the day, the golf game is about like, you know, it's about having fun. And like you said, like Austin said, it's about you know, getting people that's that's not involved into the game to play the game. The, we always have that, well, we don't have anyone that we can relate to, so we don't go. We don't want to go do it. So that's where it's like, man, look, we trying to be the relate to y'all to show, like, hey, we went and played football, and, you know, we went and played the – we didn't – we out here golfing now. You know, football players out here to golfing. Y'all can start early. You don't have to go play football if you don't want to. You can be good at golf, and they make just as much more money than football players. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about getting. <laughs> and you can play that game for years on years. So it's like, you know, we can be those group, and it's literally you can go out there and, and be yourself and just get good at the game of golf all at the same time. I, I mean, I absolutely love the messaging. I mean, I think. You guys all said it exactly, and, and the rest of the guys did. I think it's so cool. One, I love the fact that you guys just want to have a good time and play golf. Wearing what you want to wear, your vibe is your vibe. Listening to music, don't listen to music. There's so much, um, I don't know what the word is, stigmas of, uh, like against these things, right? Polo, khakis, golf shoes. I'm 40. I just got a pair of golf shoes. Honestly, I don't really like them, but I got them because I'm like, yeah. everyone else has them. Um, but I, that's what I love about it. First of all, I think getting golf out to everyone is, is so important, right? In this day and age, it, it should be open to everyone. And nothing should get in that way. Is it buying clubs or paying to go on a course or, I don't know, some people don't have polos, right? Like people just... So, like, if you don't have a polo, you, you're not going to go play golf, right? Like, it's like if you don't have a helmet, right. you can't go play football, really. So I think what you guys are doing is, is awesome, like on a whole new level. So I want to break, I want to jump into that though. Like you're sitting, was it in Florida where you guys all met, you played around the golf and then Noe and Melvin and a bunch of people were doing a presentation. What, what, what's like, what's that, that, that first, I'm sure you had some talks before, but what's that when he rolls it out, like, we're going to start this. What's that like for you, Rob? I'll start with you. I think it was just like a lot of brainstorming, you know, ideals, thoughts, um, you know, calling each other. Oh, you, you want you? What you think about this? You know, all right, I call you back. Let me call somebody else. Like, what y'all think about this? I think it was a, a you know, a, a, a bunch of us trying to reach out to each other to kind of get each other's ideals and thoughts on, you know, what possibly could Vibes Golf Club be. And at the time, we didn't know the name, so it was what this could be. Right. So we were, we were trying to figure out a name. Uh, we were trying to figure out who we are and what and what best describes us you know, with a word or with the, you know, a phrase. Um, mm -hmm. We came up with Vibes Golf Club. Um, so I think it was just this is a lot of brainstorming. It was a lot of phone calls. There's a lot of let, let me call you right back. Um, a lot of reaching out to one another. Um, and I think eventually I think we all came together and started kind of mapping it out, writing it down and, um, and really and putting it out there. So I would say for for uh, I didn't I didn't end up making that Florida trip, but when everybody came to California, um, and we all went golfing out here, we all kind of sat around. That's when we had that like okay. I think the Florida was just the initial like this is what we want to do. But I think when everybody came to Cali, and we was literally all standing around the the, uh, the pool table, that's when it got real. Where we was like 
And then when Oway like kind of brought it to our attention, like at first when he like it was man, it was like a whole year before we got started. No way had brought it to me, Mills, and we just kind of after that the golfing when we went golfing. No way said something like, man, like what if y'all got into golfing? And we just kind of tried to like start something to get people that look like us into the game of golf. I was like, well, let, I don't care, let's do it. You know, I'm not thinking nothing of it. And so that whole year, you know, no way was brainstorming on how to. Did we didn't know? I didn't know. He didn't say nothing to me about it. No thing. Then one day he popped up and was like, man, I, I've been mapping this out for a whole year and I'm, I'm ready to do this. So then when he brought it to the attention to everybody, I think at first everybody was like, well, what, what, what are we doing? Like, like we want to do it, but what is it? Like, <laughs> we still was kind of just lost. Like, like, you know, what, what is it? Where is it going to go? Like, what are we going to be doing? Like, what's the, what's the message that we, but I think once we started doing events, we start having like our own little small events that's when it was like okay now we see what we're what we're our our message is like what we're trying to do what we're trying to accomplish is and like you said it's just bringing a lot of diverse and more people into the game of golf um but that initial i didn't know what to to process when Noe was talking about it but i was like i was all in but i just didn't know what what would we be doing like what's what's i still it was like at first i was like i still didn't i'm like i would call Noe like no way what I still don't get it, bro. Like, I still don't get what we're trying to do. Like, but just eventually, you know, it, once things start coming to light, now you start to see what No Way was seeing in the future. Awesome. Yeah, kind of. So. I'm like Kinzel, so I didn't make the initial Florida trip. I had just, I left or something. I couldn't make it. But, um, and like, like, like he said, like when No Way first had to deal with Rob, it, it started off with just phone calls, like, so then I just kind of remember after they came back from Florida, I wasn't there, but I knew they were all excited. Like, this can't be something like how they enjoyed the golf, how they captured it, having the guys. And it was something I think, you know, no way had his layout of it with the pillars and how we was going to do it. But I don't think everything was still formulated until, like he said, we just kept going and it kept building and growing and expanding to what it is now with the layout it is now and everything. But. I honestly think us just getting out there together is really what help it come together more. Like an ideal is nothing if you don't execute. And that's kind of something no way tells us to this day. Like execution is the most important thing. And I think us getting together and actually going golfing and doing stuff and getting the content and executing on stuff is what's helped us grow to what is becoming and has a chance to be in the future. So you talk about that content, and I think that one of the really cool things that you can see in all the content, especially you know, on the Vibes Instagram, which if you're not following A, you should be, and uh, B, just do it now because we told you to. But um, everyone <laughs> on your squad has a unique vibe. Like That is very clear in watching this content. So I want to know, I'm going to start with you, Austin. We're going to do a little segment here. It's going to be called Describe Your Vibe. And I'm going to kick it over to Austin first. And I want you to, Austin, describe your vibe. Um, My vibe is a competitor. I'm probably the more stern one in the group, the mean one. So, like, I'm arguing with kids. But one thing I know, like, if I ain't the best, personally, I'm not going to be the worst. And I'm not accepting nobody saying I'm the worst in the group. Like, that's like, like that's, listen, one thing you're not going to do is place me at the bottom. And I think, like, that keeps off my vibe and my competitive edge of it's everything else between Kinzel and D. Hill and Mel and them. Like, well, y'all not y'all not better than me. It's a certain group, like, Eastern. Them, I even tell Rob I might got him now. I've been, I ain't seen him. He, he had a little injury, so he just slowed up. He don't like it, see. <laughs> <laughs> my vibe is definitely more of, the competitive side and just be, and honesty on the court. Like, we just not going to say you're better than you are or not. Like, nah, like we're going to just keep everybody straight on the mirror of how good they actually are and whatnot. All right. Kenzel, describe Me, your vibe. I'm, I'm the Kenzel. That, that does my role. <laughs> I, that, that, I bet on everything. <laughs> I don't care what, what hole we on. I don't care how bad I'm going to be. My whole thing is I'm, 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 I'm gambling. I, I, I like to make money. But when it comes to golf, I'll be losing money. <laughs> but that don't matter. <laughs> but that's my life, it. man. It's like, I don't care if we put into anything. Like, no way, Tanner, they be getting on me and Austin because we slow the game up sometimes because we be betting so much. That we, and then we kind of get into it. We get into it like, 
nah, you ain't you ain't find your ball, so it don't count. I don't care if you lost it, then there ain't no money to the ball, you know. But that's my vibe, man. I just love like you know, and I'm and I, again, I'm the person that I can play bad the whole time. But if I make one putt, you gonna think I made a whole hole in one, and that's just that's just my energy, man. But I'm gonna gamble on everything. That's just what I do. I love it. I, I, I hate to say it, but I need to call that one eight hundred number. That they be out. <laughs> I, I can't stop. That's my vibe, though, man. I can't, you know, gambling is like my thing that I love to do. Bobby. Rob. Uh, um, that's a tough one to follow up on. Um, it really is. Right? Uh, but like he, he did say, he he's the gambler, but he be losing. So, again, he be losing. <laughs> Uh, Austin, Austin is not better than me. And I think Austin is a competitor, but he is not better than me at all. Um, I think, I think I'm Mr. Vibe. I'm, I'm think I'm, I'm Mr. Vibes. I got a good, I got a good swing. It looks really well. I can play well. I'm a, I'm always, I'm averagely good at everything. Averagely good at everything, at least. So um, I'm never going to be at the bottom so that, you know, they fight and argue about who's the worst. <laughs> I'm not in those discussions, um, but you know, I'm just, I, I have a good time. I'm Mr. Good time as well. Uh, we go out there, we have a, a fun time. I'm out there to have fun. I'm going to have fun, but it is fun to be winning. And, and I think if I stay away from losing, I'm always having a great time. If I'm beating Kenzel in Austin. I am having a great time. And I think that's most of the time. So, uh, you gotta get you so that's, that'd be my vibe to beat these two every time. I think I'm having a good time. We got to get him back out there. He's coming off yeah, IR right yeah. now. Man, I done I got think better. He's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> now. That, that ain't got nothing to do with my swing. <laughs> oh, man. This is, I'm, my face hurts from smiling and laughing so much. So I appreciate it. Um, what What's something that, you guys are most excited about like what's a goal coming up that you know you're looking for in the future for vibes to hit and rob i'll, I'll go right back to you i would just say i want I, I i think i'm ready for i'm more content from us i think the content that we have like we're a great group of, of men um and we've we've known each other our chemistry is all well especially on the golf course like that competitive people need to see that we get com we compete like it's like fourth quarter, fourth and uh, fourth and go. <laughs> That's how we competing for the for a championship. Again, like Kenzo said, last hole he made only one, but you gonna think he had a hole in one? He is screaming to the top of his lungs when he's when he does this. And we're and if I'm on his team, I'm doing the same. So we we we're going to compete when we're on teams and stuff. So I think. Uh, to see that content, just to see us having a good time, seeing us play, uh, just seeing the environment of the weekends that we ha that we have and that we share with one another. Uh, on top of like you know the vibes, we're a vibes golf club. is is bigger than just the golf. Like you know the vibes are uh, are every day, twenty four seven, twenty five eight. However you want to look at it, we we have vibes. So I think that's something for the people to see. The personalities come out, and you know you get to see who people really are. You know you get to know somebody's story as well. Uh, for me, I, I say Kenzel. I say the impact, man. The impact that you know I know um, that we're gonna have on the game of golf. Um, just because you, you know you got other people that kind of do with similar what we do, but in my opinion, don't nobody bring the energy like we bring to the game of golf. And just seeing that impact, and once we actually really blow up, and you start to see people on the golf course literally acting pretty much the same way we are, and they got vibes hats on, and you know vibes gear, and I think that, you know, that's going to be a, um, you know, validation that, man, like we, we, it's happening, you know, it's happening. Um, we actually are doing something that people mm -hmm. are enjoying and you starting to see people that, like you said, look like us in other influences. We don't care if it's, it could be rappers just, or your average, you know, kid, um, you know, living, you know, in poverty or something like that. They still going out there to game of golf and got a vibes hat on because they like, man, these dudes right here or the reason why I got in the game of golf, because they look like they're having fun with it. So that's like, for me, that's like my thing. Like, you know, just making an impact on life, man. It's just, uh, or impacting people's eyes outside of football. We have that impact, you know, when it came to football, but man, how how big would it be that we actually turn impact from football to have another impact in the game of golf that we never probably thought that we would be doing? 
Um, That's cool. I think, I mean, and that, what Kenzel said kind of go along with mine. I, um, I've told the guys before, I can't wait to the day that I'm traveling or I'm somewhere random and I see somebody in a random go- uh, Vibes t-shirt, that a complete stranger, a go- Vibes hat or something. And um, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to is our growth. Like, I think we're a lot bigger than what our social media presence shows or did somebody know. But I think with the events we have coming up and the things we have planned and our layout for the future, and the next three or four years, like how big this thing is going to be, I think I'm just excited for it. Like I've been telling my friends and other guys, like I, it's it's just been fun. It's been a long ride. I've been learning a lot. I've been learning a lot about business. I've been golf. Like it's just, and I just can't wait for that impact actually to hit and for everything to match. Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously we're honored that you guys are, you know, here to share, you know, even part of the story with us here on the podcast has been a real, uh, it's, been, it's been really awesome for us. Attention athletes, are you ready to take control of your financial future and score big off the field? Oak Bridge Wealth Management, led by wealth manager Chris Anasetti is your all-star team of financial experts, specifically catering to professional athletes like you. We tackle your unique financial challenges head on so you can focus on what you do best. Our comprehensive and adaptive approach sets us apart. Starting with our strategic partners, we create a seamless, frictionless experience tailored to your financial journey. Our services evolve alongside your career. From cash flow management and major purchases to estate planning and long-term investments. Don't wait until the fourth quarter. Secure your financial legacy now and reap the benefits of our expertise through your career and beyond. With Oakbridge, you'll gain peace of mind, financial freedom, and a solid game plan for the future. Top NFL players like Chase Roulier, Alec Ingold, Tyler Biotish, and more have already joined our winning team, and now it's your turn. Here's what former Badgers All-American and Dallas Cowboys center Tyler Biotish has to say. From the beginning, Chris guided me in setting financial goals and provided me with the necessary tools. He's been a constant support, like a brother, throughout my life. His guidance played a crucial role in my NFL journey. It's time to elevate your financial game plan. Connect with Chris on Instagram at OakbridgeWM underscore Anaceti. That's Oakbridge, W-M underscore A-N-I-C-E-T-E. And join the winning team. Uh, so we want to thank you guys for that. And, you know, you guys have already, you know, mentioned making an impact not in the world of football, but you guys all met because of football. And we're going to move back to Badger football here because this is Believe in Badgers after all. And so uh, that's <laughs> right. Uh, that's right. Rob, Rob, Rob knows what's up. You know, I got my, uh, I got the goods right here too. Don't you worry. <laughs> So, um, oh, yeah. let's go. So, so yeah, let's yeah. go all the way around, all the way around. Yeah, yeah. That's his Wando's on it. That's right. I, I met my wife 10, 14, 17. Yeah, that's somebody had that made for us. Mm. It's the only thing I, I'll display on this whole entire <laughs> wall. It's like my favorite thing. Wando's is my favorite thing. No, I'm kidding. My wife is my favorite. My we kid is my favorite all, thing. We all went through the Wando. We all love Wando's. Well, Wando's. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't but think y'all so, understand. This is like, you, guys so, don't, you guys oh. don't love Wando's the same way that Bernie loved Wando's. Just trust me. As someone who was there during the Bernie's Wando's. Probably not. Years, we probably did. Like, <laughs> but we all got our own little love for it. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves Wando's. But Bernie loves Wando's in a very special way that I, I think is a little bit unhealthy. So. So, um, but let's, uh, yeah. you know, let, 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 let's keep it going back a little bit. Um, Rob, Austin, you guys are from Ohio. How'd you guys end up in Wisconsin, man? Like how, how you know, we, we've actually, Bernie and I have been very fortunate to talk to a lot of Ohio Badgers in our interviews over the day. Lee Evans, Chris Chambers, Dante Sanders, like a lot of the older Ohio guys. We haven't gotten a lot of like, the i mean the younger than our generation ohio guys so how do you guys end up in madison because it wasn't the same like sort of pipeline that that of the guys that we knew back in the late 90s early 2000s so i guess i'll start with you austin you know how does wisconsin get on the map for you and then how do you end up in madison and then same thing to you rob next all right so first of all i i give rudolph and they they know my uh, relationship with joe rudolph to this day my recruiting coach like 
hand, like hands down to me, one of the best recruiting coaches, one of the best coaches. Like, you know, he's not at Wisconsin no more. I texted him when he was at Tech. I texted him congratulations on Notre Dame. He texts my mom, checks on her, like Rudolph. Like, and I think I sensed that from the jump. But um, beyond that, um, so Tony Lowry, um, old court Badger quarterback back in the 90s, was actually one of my high school coaches. So he went to UW. So that was kind of a pre introduction. And then um, Chambers, actually from Cleveland, he played, I played AAU basketball in Cleveland. So me and him played both for, uh, which when he played with CBC, Cleveland Basketball Club, which changed to OBC when I like when Columbus kids start playing for him. So we kind of, so that was always an introduction, especially like when Mike Duncan, who's the director of OBC, or was at the time, um, when he seen me getting recruited for football, like we had conversations. So it was kind of, that's kind of how I initially got introduced to UW and they became like a spot on my list. And then um, my brother and one of my good friends, Nike. <laughs> Um, like he is a linebacker from my high school who went, uh, he ended up going to Marshall, but he went to, <laughs> this is a fun, he, like y'all have to have him tell this story, but um, he went to the UW football camp and him and Chris Borland were up there competing for a scholarship. Like that was like the known thing. And to this day, like Zaki would tell you like, nah, that was Chris Borland scholarship. I was just looking at it from the outside. Like, you know, cause he says Chris went up there and was playing amazing. Chris went and picked the field goal and everything else. So, those like three people like in cohesiveness probably introduced me to UW and then I started watching them as I was getting recruited and everything and then meeting Coach Rudolph and stuff and it just felt like home. Going on my visit, meeting Coach Chris and all them guys. It felt like home. So that was that's kinda how I ended up there. Uh, um <clears throat> my story is it's similar. Uh Coach uh Lowry, he was my offensive coordinator, what, my junior year and I you know, I had like 80 catches that year. So I was like, you know, you want me to go to Wisconsin? I'll go up there to Wisconsin to see what their camp is about. Uh, I went up there and, of course, me and Austin played on the same high school team. So, um, you know, just to go visit him and then go get to compete, um, you know, at, at a big time school uh, was something, you know, that's something that I wanted to do. I went up there and, you know, I earned a scholarship. And, you know, they I think they had the coaching change. Coach Bielema left. Um then, you know, I had a new recruiting coach, and then I had an, another new recruiting coach. Uh, I had a few different recruiting coaches throughout that process. Um, but I think when I went up there, you know, it felt like home. You know, uh, one of my closest friends from high school goes there. Um, you know, uh, I had I had some, you know, some huge shoes to fill with, like, Aberderis, Nick Toon. It was the, some of the guys that I looked at, too. You know, that was some of my main reasons of going there. And um, so, you know, I think that was that's kind of how I made my decision. Uh, Wisconsin just felt right. So <clears throat> for me, I, I didn't. All right, Kenzo. Yeah, for me, I didn't know nothing about Wisconsin. You know, being from North Carolina, <laughs> you don't really know too much about Midwest unless it's Ohio State and Michigan. That's just all you hear. You don't know nothing about no other schools. Um, but I had a coach um, um, that my stepdad is, is the whole little story behind it, the reason how I even got to Wisconsin. Is my stepdad was reading the newspaper, and it was a coach – that coached at a high school um, that was known to get people in college. He was uh, Keenan Allen, a lot of those big name guys. He was their high school coach. So my stepdad just called him randomly and said, "Man, I, you know my, you know my stepson. He's you know he goes to Riesel, uh High School. He's looking to you know further his recruiting." So that coach knew Coach Settle, uh, John Settle, who was the running backs coach. John Coach Settle is from my hometown. So my parents and all that stuff knew Coach Settle from, you know, back in high school and all that stuff. So when he actually, you know, got the phone call, he came down. Um, it was just like a little automatic, like, connection. You know, I didn't get my scholarship right away, but they <laughs> they wanted to come down and do an eye test because obviously I'm, you know, I'm short. So they like, <laughs> yeah, we got to come down and do an eye test. <laughs> and even Coach Settle said, he said, yeah, Coach Bima, he, he wanted me to sit down and do do I to see how tall you actually are? Um, so they and then they end up inviting <laughs> me to one of their camps. Um, I went to a one day uh, camp. I flew up there. Uh, same day, flew up there, did the camp, flew back the same day, and literally they called me that next morning saying we want to offer you a scholarship. I didn't know nothing about Wisconsin. Didn't know nothing, nothing. 
And then when I took my visit, I was I met Austin. Literally, a, a lot of guys that we end up literally signing. We all kind of came in like we on that one visit. I don't know if it was I don't, even, I don't know if it was an official visit, but it, they might have timed it up to like okay, all our guys that we probably know is probably gonna come here. Because soon as we got the camp, it's like, dude, we all was on the same visit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So then you know it was just one of those like you said because I was committed to Oregon State. You know that's where I was going, but once I went to Wisconsin and then saw. I had my official visit. I ain't even taking an official visit to Oregon State. I was just like, nah, I'm cool. I'm closer. I know Wisconsin plays on TV every week. So if my parents can't make it, they can watch me play. Because in Oregon State, you don't bear, you don't see them on TV at all. Um, literally. So I'm like, they ain't even gonna get to see me even just sitting at home. So when I went to Wisconsin, it was it, like like they said, it felt like home. Uh, and I had people that I, I can relate to. Um, and the rest was history. That's phenomenal. I mean, like, I, I one of the things that, you know, I've loved about doing this podcast, just, you know, getting to where all you guys come from and all these different backgrounds end up in Madison, which is someplace that we all love still to this day, or at least I hope you all do. I know me and Bernie, oh, yeah, but, sure. but uh, yeah. I, I do hope you all do. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so l- let's talk about like your first time sort of getting to campus as a group for. Uh, I don't think did you, did you guys enroll early? Did any of you three guys enroll yeah, early? Were you guys I January did. enrollees? Yeah, I enrolled in January. <clears throat> okay, mm-hmm. so so talk about that because I've always thought that's that, that's really fascinating. What was that like coming in, sort of you know, as an early enrollee? Because there were not a lot of guys doing that at that point who were not quarterbacks. So as a receiver, especially back in 2011, you know, there are not a lot of dudes who are you know mid year enrollees if you're not a quarterback. yeah. So I ain't gonna lie, me being small. And going to Wisconsin, I'm like, these big dudes, bro. These dudes, I ain't, never, I ain't used to playing against them in high school. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was just one of those, like, you know, because my team, we was more fast. Like, we had big guys on the team, but not D1 athlete big. You know what I mean? Like, we had Rob Hammerstein, uh, who was our line? Moffitt, Joe Moffitt. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, like hold size on. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> Travis, all them guys went to the league. Travis. Yeah, and um, then like my first, so my first semester was when yeah. uh, JJ, when JJ Watt was leaving. So I was there to watch Pro Day, and I'm like, dude, this dude big as shit. I'm like, he big as. I said, dude, ain't no way I'm about to play against this man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, if they look like this. I'm like, yeah, this, this gonna be, it's gonna be different. You know what I mean? But then obviously, once you get there, you kind of just adapt to it. You know, you adapt to the game. Um, and then, you know, everybody kind of welcomes you and stuff like that. I was, I'm one of the smallest ones on the team. Um, but it got to a point where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing in with everybody as far as strength, speed, to where I'm like, okay, I can actually do this. Um, so, you know, when I first got there, it was, a, it was an awakening, man, just seeing how big everybody was. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, you know, I love it. I still got love for Wisconsin to this day. That's just my alma mater. You know, I'd do anything for them if it comes down to it. So, um, but, you know, that was, that was my first initial when I first went there. You know, I was like, dude, I might need to go back to high school just for, <laughs> for a little bit longer. Oh, these dudes ain't, they ain't, and they all, you know, they ain't been here. So they ain't got the training program. So I ain't, I'm coming in at 155, five, you know, five, seven, five, eight, 155. Like, dude, don't get crushed out here, man. So, you know, I got introduced to her who looks into your soul every time he wants to talk to you. As if, like, I'm just going to take everything out your body. So, you know, he comes in and oh, I forgot about this story. My very first day, I don't know if it was the summer. Oh, no. Yeah, it was my very first day. He told me since I was like one, it was only me and Joel Stave that came in early. He said, you got a five minute plan. And if you drop, everybody got to run extra because of you. I said, hold on. <laughs> My first day of being <laughs> I don't even think I did plank in high school. <laughs> you know, I live, but I ain't doing no planks. So I got there, heard, made me do five-minute plank in the weight room and had people just watching it. I, and I did it. I actually did it. I was shaking, shaking like a little stripper. <laughs> you know what I mean? but, but I did it, man. But that was my awakening in college. And like I said, the rest is history, man. I love it. It, 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 was, it was a good time. Um, for me, when I so I came in the summer, I actually I flew to Madison the day after I graduated high school. So I literally graduated on a Saturday night, flew out Sunday morning. Like, like I stayed out all night hanging with my friends as long as I could. 
just procrastinated. Then realized I woke up the next day, was going to UW. Um, that summer, I think the summer, us coming in in the summer, uh, I was, I think it's great for college. I think it introduced me to just the college atmosphere. They had some introduction beyond the game, like the um, course structure for all the freshman athletes. So we kind of had some classes together. Um, honestly, for me, first getting on campus, it was a culture shock, classes included. Like, I just come from an inner city school. I probably, honestly, uh, it was probably nine black kids out of high school, uh, six, maybe. Maybe so, the teachers. Uh, that was probably the teachers. Yeah, like, like. so honestly, it was a real – when I first got to UW and all the guys would tell me, like, I can't just the first couple of weeks. I just sat in my room. And um, Ray Ball, he was from Columbus. He went to Westerville. He was my roommate, but he kind of he kind of got out and mingled more than I did. But I just – I sat in my room. And the reason I actually first got out was Melvin. Um, everybody was going home for, like, one of the – it was like a long weekend. We had like the third week maybe on campus. Everybody was going home and all the out of uh, state dudes was going home with God. And, uh, Melvin and his dad, um, I was probably the last one there. My, I just had my door propped open at the region. And Melvin and his dad walked in. And his dad like, what are you doing? I'm like, no, I'm just chilling here on my phone. I'm like laying up, looking at this guy on texting or something. And they, his dad just yelled at me like, hey, man, get up. You coming with us. I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just chilling. He like, nah, get your stuff, get dressed, and come with us. And then male people in the door like, yeah, come on, bro. You coming down to Kenosha. So then I kind of packed my stuff, went out there, hung out there in Kenosha for the weekend. Then after that, I just kind of got more in tune with the guys. And like I said, Madison just became the, uh, the place I know and to the love even more, you know what I'm saying, besides making my choice there. I was- Say it. It really is so interesting, everyone's backstory. You know, like a lot of us are fans, like you just know the people in the helmet and where they're from, but you don't know like the fabric that made you either love football, want to take it somewhere else, why Madison, what your experience is like, because I think everyone's experience is very different. Right. Um, so it's just, you know, Kendall, I had no idea when Wisconsin was on the map. And all of a sudden, I got a letter. It's like, come play here. <laughs> like, where's here? You know? And, uh, so I think we all have, like, these similarities, but they're also, you know, everyone has their own stories, which are, which to me are, are, is super cool. So you guys show up. Some of you at the region, which I literally hate that place. Um, <laughs> it was... <laughs> it was what it was, though. The region, listen. The region is like the region is part of the fabric in the hey, building. You, know, you experienced the whole region. That's how you know region been there forever, man. <laughs> it's never changed. <laughs> the only thing that's changed is there used to be a subway in the in the bottom, uh, and now it's you no. Know, it was I think Green Bush. It was down there, or maybe when I took a visit, it was down there. Because the only thing that was good about it is that Subway was there. The building smelled like <laughs> fresh bread. So that was good. And uh, one of the guy's girlfriends worked there. So you go in there and she'd be like, <laughs> double meat, double everything for like $3. <laughs> Just like, yeah, come get a soda whenever you want. It was great. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you show up. You're starting to acclimate yourself to Wisconsin, to football, to everything. What was it like, you know, your first game walking on the field, being a part of like that experience? Because for me, that was I redshirted, and that was the most bananas thing that I've like ever seen in my life. Um, you know, I'm from New York. We played in front of maybe two thousand people in the state championship, so it was a definitely shell shock. Like, oh my god, look at this place. What was it like for each one of you? And Austin, I'll start with you. Um, for me, I remember well because it was just like a, I was excited for Sam. I remember, you know, that Sam found out he wasn't red shirt. So it was like I was supporting my fellow freshman. Like, so I'm excited for him. He's like, he's just on the side looking, getting hype. And I'm just looking around like, I know he has to be nervous. Like that was my, that was like, I remember my thoughts being like wondering about how Sam was feeling going out there. You know what I'm saying? knowing he was going to be playing. Um, it was exciting. I mean, I think the point of view had changed from being on visits and being in the stands and actually everybody been around you and 
yelling and screaming, but I mean, for me, it was just, it was just exciting. It was, it was something to look forward to for the next year. Cause I really shared it too. So I think like seeing all that and seeing them guys prepare, I was like, I can't wait to be able to play in here. Rob. Um, that feeling, I, I, I think that feeling is just something you like want to relive you know, I, I, I played as a freshman, so I was just like that, you know, that nervous feeling of like it feeling like a video game. You know, you like, you know, you see it on the video game, the NCAA, the NCAA was out there. And, you know, that year they, they, you know, they had all the players on there. So, you know, I got to play with myself my freshman year on the game. So that was the build up. Like, oh, I can play with myself, put myself in the game. But then actually going out there. And just, you know, being with your, your your brothers. Like, you know, we've been locked in for the whole summer. Um, and, you know, I'm a freshman. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to play. I'm trying to show that I can play. I could be out here with grown men. <laughs> like again, I was big, but I wasn't the biggest. <laughs> them linemen were huge when we had Groy. Like them dudes was they were huge. They were mean. So but I felt like I belonged. So I think running out there, that was a, it's a surreal feeling. Um, something that I, you know, I, I think about that all the time. I got, I literally got an actual tattoo of me um, in front of the stand. I mean, in front of the fans, like on my leg, uh, because it's just like that was just so crazy to me. Like I, that's stuff that I dreamed about, like like video game, like so. They, um, it was amazing. It's a, uh, it's a very trip that I have. Uh, I say the my. Kenzo? I would say at least the when I it, was, it made me feel excited was just seeing my name on the back of my jersey, first of all. That's where it's like, dude, okay. I ain't never seen this before. You know what I mean? So seeing that name on the back of the jersey, um, and then like you said, you going out, you coming out that tunnel, and and so when I was when I was there, that's when we had the, the back tunnel. They ain't made the new tunnel yet. So the back tunnel was when you coming out and you got all the fans on each side. So that was like, oh, this is crazy. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you get to dap the fans up and it's loud. You know, they got the music playing, it's loud. And then when you running down the tunnel and you literally just looking around like, dude, there's about 80-some thousand people in here. And I, I was just playing in front of thousand-some, you know, a thousand-some people. I said, dude, this is crazy. I never, I'm, I, I, I always told myself I wanted to go D1, but I, I honestly never thought that I would be there. You know, playing in front of eighty some thousand people, um, at that. So it was definitely, and I didn't get, I didn't, they didn't redshirt me. So I was almost a little nervous. I said, "Dude, we blow these teams. I, I know they put me in the game. <laughs> they, they gonna take them boys and they gonna put us in." I said, "Dude, oh, I don't know if I'm ready." Because when I go back and from like my junior senior year, and I went back to look at freshman year film, oh my god, I suck so bad. I said, dude, I was terrible. I said, dude, I, I, I couldn't get off the line against like Antonio Finellis. I, I said, I'm just going back to looking at practice against. I said, dude, I was that was not it. Cause you know, I'm thinking at that time, I'm like, man, I'm like, cook these dudes. I, I said, but when I go back and look, I said, dude, I was not ready. Like, and it, it makes sense that like I'm like, that's what coaches are seeing as players. You think like, man, I'm ready to go. But you when I go back and look, I'm like, I definitely wasn't ready at the time. So I think that's why more it was. Me, it was uh, – they didn't redshirt me, so I did more kick return, um, kick return, punt return stuff. Like, you know, once it got blow out, then they would put me back deep, um, which obviously that's what I made my mark in. You know, that's what I had loved. And it's crazy because I barely did it in high school. I didn't do punt return because we had somebody, and I got kick return, and they were kicking to somebody else the whole time. Um, so he did all the run back. So when I went to college, and I'm like, dude, this is my first time really doing kick return. <laughs> I'm like, man, it's, it's different. You know what I mean? The ball <laughs> highs. There ain't no high school where it line drives and it flips. I said, these punters ain't playing. You know what I mean? So, but it was just that experience, that whole experience, I would say, is definitely, you know, one that you're going to always remember is running out that tunnel, seeing all them people, um, and then the fans being on the side and stuff like that. So, yeah. Matt. Before they jumped on, you know, you were talking, telling me about that uh, backside ISO block, right? I remember my first time. So I was at tight end. So they, you know, we used to, um, 
motion to H back, which is like our smaller tight end boom. And he would sometimes have to do that same kind of lead thing. My first time leading in camp was on Chris Borland. <laughs> when I say I was like, uh, oh, this is a different game. I remember going, it was hole was perfect. Wide Pierce. Boom. Mike, he coming in feeling I got him. Boom. He set me right on my butt. I never forget. Monty cut off. My look, I said I literally landed sitting down. Monty cut off me and still hit the hole. So uh, the running backs coach at the time, oh, yeah, great block, man. He got through there. That's all we need. Warner <laughs> shaking his head, looking down. At it. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Not like, but nah, that's like you said. Looking back at freshman film after you get older, you realize like the the difference in what <laughs> what you was putting on film for the coaches to try to get you on the field. Oh, Matt, you're you're uh, muted. Of course, I'm muted, but I'm you know here here we go. So we don't have a ton of time left with you guys tonight. Um, but one thing I I, I do want to know, and I'll I'll kick it back over to Rob here here to start this one. Um, what did you what what sort of off the field in Madison? What was the most meaningful thing when you like think back to your time off the field in Madison? What what do you think about like what is like sort of the thing that like sort of either resonates with you or like that was super meaningful to me, and I'm, I'm really glad that happened. Go ahead, AT. Rob. You hear him, Rob? Yeah, Rob. I don't think Rob heard him. Off the field. He breaking up. Oh, no, NFL, Arena. I didn't finish. I still had a semester left of school. Uh, so me going back to school – was a big thing for me. Like when I was done playing football, you know, I decided to go back to school to finish my degree, um, my youth program uh, with uh, kids who had cerebral palsy. Um, it was a it was a local uh, youth program with them. It was probably like maybe five minutes from the campus. Uh, I worked at a elementary school. I can't remember the name of the elementary years ago, um, but I think the the impact that I had on those kids for like a short period of time was uh, very impactful. Um, just being around them, you know, being a, a football player, an ex-football player, um, being in these kids' life, the inner city, Madison, too. So it was just um, tons of kids with diversity, um, you know, different backgrounds um, who who don't act a player, a, a bad football player uh, um, that's literally right down, down the street from you. Uh, you know, the time we share playing uh, dodgeball, my, uh, my favorite moments uh, outside of football. And, you know, it was, and it happened to be once I was done with football, uh, you know, going back to uh, work with kids. I think that motivated me uh, today to, you know, continue my, my with, um with children and, and, you know, the youth. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. For me, that's great. Uh, I would say all can tell. It was definitely, I think it was, it was either Thursdays or Fridays. I forgot which day it was. I used to always go to the, um, a group of us used to always go to the children's hospital. Um, So we used to always go there, like every, it was every week, you know, it was an every week thing uh, to go to the children's hospital and just, you know, it, it makes you appreciate life a little bit more um, because the kids that they actually did, you know, it was like had heart conditions or brain conditions and stuff like that and just leaving an impact on them because when they do see you they be excited you know they be excited to see you know a uw football player sometimes you get caught up in the game of you know get caught up in the game of football that you don't realize like how impactful you is to people that don't play or can't necessarily play but they get to watch you just on tv um so i would say that's like was very meaningful to me um and i think i think it was actually when, when Russell was there, I think he the one who kind of started it a little bit because you see, he still kind of does it to this day. Um, he started it. So he had a couple of like, just used to go with him all the time. And then once he left, we kind of just kept that thing going because, you know, once you go there, you kind of see like, dude, like these people really love us. You know what I mean? And they just, they, it's, they just want to see, they just autograph on a, just a book that they got. And they are super excited, super happy. 
And that meant a lot to me. That's why I kind of kept going, just seeing them as little kids that look up to you that really barely can talk, you know, barely can walk or just have like, you know, certain, um, you know, injuries or surgeries that they might have to go through or things that they just going through in life that's pretty kind of permanent. Um, to see like how you know much love that they have for you so just going there was big for me out the field um yeah. I, um, I mean, um I, like my biggest thing honestly off the field was probably just the team bonding and events i learned a lot like i said when i first got up to you it was a huge culture shift. i learned a lot about a lot of different people um I went fishing for the first time at UW with the team binding, going over uh, Kellners and them. Like I went golfing for the first time, went paintball. I'd never been paintballing before. And just like those events and just expanding as a young man, growing into a man, I think um, off the field, UW formed me in a big way, just understanding people and everything. And like that was kind of my biggest thing off the field, just the things I was introduced to. Guys, I, I, th this is so cool. I, I really appreciate, you know, I know Matt Perkins as well, coming on, sharing your stories, <laughs> kind of a little bit raw. Like, I love it. Like, it's really nice to hear, um, you know, like kind of what Madison has done for a lot of people. But for some people, it seems like it's even it's even bigger than just football, right, or just a game. Um, and, Austin, you'll like this. I went hunting one time. I never touched a gun. I like shooting guns, but not at like animals or mm -hmm. anything living. And it was the most boring time I've ever had. Not my vibe. Let me just go there. It is not my vibe. <laughs> I'm like a let's drink beer in this tree. And my friends like, don't even talk to me. We're waiting for a, a deer to walk up so I can shoot it with like this gun. I'm like, dude, this is so boring. Four hours. It was snowing. I'm like, Man, you know what? <laughs> I, I did this once. I'll never do this again. Um, <laughs> but that, that's an experience I would have never gotten in New York. Right. So, um, so I feel you. It's just so nice. Like, what are we like 10 years apart, eight, 10 years apart, 12 years, five, seven, whatever it is. And just to hear like the love you guys have and your stories, Brings me back to the good old days in the locker room. Um, you know, Kenzo, you said yeah, pushing that, people in the uh, walking like, into I, the I, stadium. I that was my favorite thing to do. Have, just so people get experience. Like, yo, it's different than going through that tunnel with just the music. Right? I remember. And they reaching, they reaching down. Yo, you slap. I wasn't even playing. Was like, I remember. I'm yo, slapping hands. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, even walking out the door, and it's literally a line of people that's literally standing just outside the little rope. And you just dapping them up as you go, and they just yelling, smacking your helmet as you come through it. It gets you that adrenaline rush, like, oh, it's about to go down. It's about to, yeah. it's about to, you know what I mean? And if someone was wearing a Michigan jersey, I just would push them out of the way. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. It's game day, and, and you're in Madison. If you're wearing a Michigan shirt and you're standing anywhere near that hallway. Ain't nobody going to say I nothing. literally could do anything to you and no one's going to get, I can't get in trouble. No, no one's going to say nothing. But listen, guys, I, I, I know we're getting late and uh, it's just such a pleasure to, to be here with you guys and, and hear how you, you know, your growth as men and now what you're trying to do with vibes. It, it's just you, so man. cool. And I know Matt and I both really appreciate it. No, thank you. For having me. We appreciate it all. For sure, guys. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to all of our parts, our four-part series with Vibes Golf Club. If you missed any of the previous three episodes, make sure to Cheers check you out guys. your YouTube feed and uh, anywhere you get podcasts to check those out. Um, and so uh, until next time, thanks for tuning in to the Believe in Badgers podcast. Make sure to check out uh, VibesGolfClub.com. Check them out on Instagram uh, at Vibes Golf Club. That's Vibes with only way. the only way to spell it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, <laughs> on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. Yeah, for sure. Hey, guys, thank you. This is so cool. I was.